Okay, now I know you've all seen <laughs> Painting with Black Gesso. So I'm just going to give it a start. And then I'll skip ahead. I've just got a small paintbrush because I really don't want the black gesso very thick. I don't want it to obscure the detail. So I'm just starting with a really small paintbrush. Okay. You can see that this one in particular has a lot of really fine detail, as a lot of these do. A lot of these are, well, all of these are the Primo, I mean, Prima <laughs> molds, except this one. So you can see if you just wait a very few minutes when you're doing the black gesso. That where you painted because the detail is so so fine. Any bubbles that you created while painting will pop and show you where it still needs to be painted. So, okay, I'm just going to go on and I'll be right back. Okay, now one of the things that I really love about the Swelligan, just like with acrylic paints or anything else, I could decide to paint the little cherub, the wings, and the background in all different colors. Um, this time I'm going to do the cherub and the background in different colors. And I mean different metal, metal coatings. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do the cherub. I'm going to do the cherub and the silver. So one of the things that I will tell you, when using the Swelligan, especially the metal coatings, don't use one of your good paintbrushes. Just use a rather crappy <laughs> paintbrush. You won't regret it. That's because the Swelligan has metal particles in the paint. Now they're small, so they're not anything you can see. But they're definitely something that will clog the paintbrush. Alright. So I'm just going to reshake this. Now, like I said, I bought these a while ago, so it's been six or seven years, probably. And just like I'm known to do, I'm terrible at it. I'm painting from the lid. <laughs> so the first time around, you're just going to worry about giving it a, a complete coating. The second time around, the only thing you're worried about <clears throat> is that it stays wet. Now, when you're doing the second coating, 
you can decide maybe I just want the face to have the patina. So I'll just re-wet the face. Now on these resin pieces, generally I don't I don't use any kind of prep or anything. The paint sticks just fine. So I don't feel that's necessary. think this would take that long but y'all don't mind watching me paint right <laughs> and if you do you can always just skip ahead Okay. Now, really and truly, it doesn't take any time at all for that to dry. So, I'm going to go ahead and right away put the second coating on. Now for the silver, you really don't have a lot of choice in the patina. You could use <clears throat> you could use the rust, and it, I mean not the rust. I'm sorry. You could use the uh, Tiffany green or something like that, and it will it will do a little something, but it won't turn. It won't turn the green, the green color. So really with the silver, your choices are the darkening. The darkening patina. No, don't worry, I've got it in the bottle. You can choose to paint it on. Um, just put it in a little cup or something. Or just like I did and just squirt it on straight out of the bottle all right I'll just give that a minute or two to do its deal to do its do. One of the reasons why I love working on a glass mat because nothing will hurt it. Okay. So while it's still wet, after that has absorbed in a little bit, I've got I've got all of the dyes over here. This one is the chartreuse, which is one of my favorites. <laughs> when it comes out. Alright, now that actually may be a little, a little, uh, heavy, but I'm going to let it finish blooming. 
Then I've got some of the Caribbean blue, which there are, I believe, three blues. Now, on the bronze, it really doesn't matter what um, patina you, you choose to use. The gold green verdigris will work fabulous, so will the Tiffany blue, and even the darkening. So I'm just going to put another just light just a light coating of the metal paint the metal coating the reason you do that is because the patina need something to work with I'll just let that soak in just a minute and then let's see this is going to be a green green gold vertigree so let's choose no I don't want black Decisions, decisions. Alright, this is the Kelly Green. I'm going to use the Kelly Green and the Chartreuse. So as you can see, that um, patina, when it first starts out, looks really dark. But once it starts to bloom, it will turn. It will take on that kind of ashy, um, ashy green. <laughs> I say green, but it's a little more of the blue. Okay, so I'm just going to Maybe that might help y'all see a little better Hmm, wonder why I didn't think of that sooner Okay, now this time I'm going to I'm going to choose to Paint it on. To try and get a little more of the detail. Okay. 
Now, it is possible to um, really get some good detail because I've got a, a few jewelry pieces that I did that on. Now this one, I will, I'll do something that I learned in Christy Freeze, Friesen's um, video. I will take this and where it's wet. from the patina I will cover that up and just let that work so let me see I'll set that over here on top of my gesso okay so now I've got the paper clay one you can see there are just a couple of tiny little spots where I could stand to go back and do some gesso on it but I'm not gonna so for this one I'm gonna use the brass and unlike on the um, little cherub one I'm gonna I'm gonna do the whole piece with the brass Now, I will admit that I have not used this on the paper clay. Excuse that the, the you heard my dog is in the house. And of course he has to come in here and keep me company. Okay, sorry about that. On the um, polymer clay one, that was the aqua, I believe. Instead of the Kelly Green. So much for my eyesight. Okay. So again, I'm just going to slather it on the second coat and again I'm going to use the um, gold green verdigris just because it's what I got out here. Okay. Now, again, I'll let that set and do its thing. Now, 
what colors to use this time. is somewhere that's the indigo somewhere there's a purple I promise I just may not have gotten it out All right, so let's go with the coffee brown. Coffee brown and the orange. Now you can see on the brass that it really is already starting to turn. That is just fantastic. All right, now the brown. I'm gonna go for the paintbrush on the brown. I'm a little intimidated on this brass. Just because I really don't want it everywhere. Okay, and then the orange, as you can see, is a very bright color of orange. Okay, now again, I'm just going to let that work. Okay, so I'm going to scoot it over here off screen a little bit. Now, back to the resume. I'm really loving how the cherub is turning out. And really and truly, I think I'm going to go back and add silver to the rest of the frame. Now, while that dye is still wet, 
it will have a tendency to want to bleed into the paint. Now, I'm going to go ahead and let that completely dry before I give it a second coat. Now, you can. Now, if you want to add some highlights back with the metal coat paint, you would need to wait the 72 hours and put the finish on, the sealer on first before you go back and add the metal paint because the metal paint will continue to react with the patinas okay so if I tried to go back and add some brass paint to this piece the patina would continue to, to bloom through it so, you would need to wait the 72 hours, then put the sealer on before you do that. Or, you would need to um, completely submerge it in water to stop the reaction. Okay? But, for now, the patina will continue to bloom as long as it's still damp. So it will continue to change just a little bit. Um, I'll show in the in the pictures at the end what the final product will look like. Okay, I don't even know where we were. I'm gonna bring back the brass lion. He is really turning out fantastic. I love how the green still shows through and the brown and the orange will kind of ah. <sighs> bleed into it. Alright, let's check on the polymer clay one here as you can see that bronze does take a while longer for the patina to bloom so let's see it with the heat gun a little bit Alright, now you can start to see 
where the patina is blooming. That chartreuse in her hair up there really stands out. Now, I did use the aqua green a little more towards the outside where it still needs a little time to bloom. That is really going to be pretty. Alright. So. There you can see. The different effects. You can get with the Swelligan. There are so many more combinations. It is truly amazing. I love these products. Now that being said. You can get very close, I say very close, but anyway, you can get close to these same effects just using acrylic paint. I'm going to show you um, that in another video. Um, I'm going to do the acrylic paints and then I'm going to do um, the waxes and show you the difference. So I'm going to really have fun creating these embellishments and I think you will too. If you haven't bought the Swelligant, you may consider it. It is fantastic. Works on so many, so many products. It works on metal. It works on leather. Works on paper, of course. It will work on, a, it works on a seashell. Um, there, are, there are just hundreds of products you can use the Swelligan on. Same with acrylic paint. You can use acrylic paint on those same products. Now, on metal, um, it won't adhere quite the same. But, um, it does on all of the rest of them. So, if you've liked this video, please consider liking sharing and subscribing click the little bell if you want notifications to show up in your email um, the links to the products should be down below as well as the links to my social media um, I've got an Etsy shop that's listed also below where I have most of my jewelry I have an Amazon shop also listed below so please consider buying something and thank you so much for watching bye for now